Welcome to Inside the Crease, the podcast from Power Hockey Canada, dedicated to the power hockey community, showcasing the sport, the players, the coaches, and the unique and inspiring stories of life with a disability that break down barriers. Now, please welcome your host, Matt Vecino. Hey, everybody. I'm your host, Matt Vecino, and joining me on this week's edition of Inside the Trees is my good buddy, Rob Legacy. How are you doing today, Rob? I'm doing great. This weather's been amazing lately. I know. We're finally getting some sunshine. I was, uh, yes. a, little, I was a little bit worried that we were never going to get those summer temperatures, but this weekend has been great. Oh, uh, if it was like this all year round, I'd be a happy camper. Me too. We might have to move to Florida after this pandemic, but uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Um, anyways, Rob, let's let's get right into it. So tell me about your first experience in sports. Oh, wow. Um, I've always been a hockey fan since okay. like I was a toddler. Um, you know, my dad watched it faithfully, uh, Montreal. Nice. Um, so my first actually sport was in the schoolyard. Okay. Playing foot, playing foot hockey. Take a tennis ball and just kick it around. I know foot hockey. We did sort of it too. Um, and then we did uh, street hockey, of course, with the sticks and nets. Mm-hmm. Uh, back then, when you were allowed to. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Um, and in the neighborhood, we even organized where um, we each street had their own team, and we would play against other streets. That's cool. So, but that was uh, that was my first or into sports in general. But as far as um, organized sports go, uh, as a preteen, I guess I started um, playing softball. That was my first, uh, you know, real team sport, organized team sport. Awesome. And then, correct me if I'm wrong, but obviously now you're a wheelchair user, but you didn't, you didn't always participate in air sports. So at what point did things like sled shot come on your radar? Yeah, I was born with spina bifida, um, which is a non-closure of the spine. Mm-hmm. Um, so I was very fortunate. Mine was very low. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used two lower limb braces to walk. So I could actually walk until about 10 years ago. So as far as the sports go, it's weird because I always played, quote unquote, regular sports. Yeah. Um, like I said, I played softball. Um, I 10 pin bowled. Um, I've skied both cross country and I even tried downhill. Nice. I loved downhill because um, the boots were strong enough that I didn't have to wear my braces. Oh, really? It's the only thing in my life that I could do other than just walk around the house a bit yeah. without yeah. my braces. So That's I loved really that. That's really interesting. That's um, interesting. Just wasn't very good at it because I didn't have that ability to, you know, to go turns. side to side. Yeah. But it was, it was fun nonetheless. Um, but as far as the the uh, para sports go. It's funny because in high school I was um, sent out to uh, basketball. Okay. And uh, it was just a little pickup thing, and we played some basketball. But right afterwards was the Toronto Spitfires, the big club, yeah. and that. Uh, and I was one. I didn't want to be labeled. Mm-hmm. You know, I had an obvious walk. I walked sort of like a penguin. Um, and that's so it was there, you know, people saw it and people knew it. Mm-hmm. And that, but I didn't want the label of, of being disabled mm-hmm. because disabled had such a negative connotation, especially back when I was born, um, which was late 60s, well, mid 60s. Um, sure. And that's how I grew up in the 70s as, you know, as a kid. Yeah. And that, so yeah, it was so, it was so negative back then. So I actually put it aside mm-hmm. and I was out one day and this guy approached me. Mm-hmm. He said, dude, man, mind if I ask you, you know, like, is your, condition permanent i said yeah i was born born with spina bifida mm-hmm. i've never had a problem talking about my disability mm-hmm. and uh he said well we play this sport you know disabled sport okay and disabled this disabled that come out disabled the disabled and he kept throwing the disabled and i'm like no i you know i'm, I'm not i'm not there yet I, yeah. i'm still playing yeah. regular sports so, so quote unquote yeah so it turned out it was actually about three years later i guess three or four years later Somebody else uh, was up actually at a pub listening to a live band with a buddy of mine. Nice. Guy walked over to me. He said, dude, he said, you know, do you mind if I ask? I said, no, go ahead. And then he asked me similar questions, you know, and I told him permanently. He said, look, he said, Sunday afternoons, three o'clock in Scarborough, which is where I lived at the time. Yeah. He said, come out, try it. If you don't like it, 
You don't have to come back. Yeah. Such a relaxed attitude. I thought, you know what? I've give loved hockey all my life. Let's give it a shot. Yeah, I might as well. And that, and I went out and, you know, I played. And, of course, we come off the ice and I, I'm like, I'm ready for this. I know they're going to like, oh, you're so good. You're this, you're that, you know. And try and butter me up to, so I come out again. Of course. But I really loved it. I, I fell in love with it. You know, like here I am playing the game I've loved mm-hmm. and not never actually played it on ice before. And now you had that opportunity. And now I have that opportunity. And uh, the rest is history. <laughs> well, it's it's a pretty crazy history. And you're a humble guy. When I first met you, I didn't even know this. But for our listeners, Rob is a three-time Paralympian uh, in sledge hockey. Correct me if I'm wrong, but your first Paralympic Games were in 1994 in Lillehammer. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, I started playing sledge hockey, actually, in the uh, end of 92, like late 92, like December. Um, Are you serious? Tri- Sorry? Are you serious? Yep. The oh tryouts were the, were the following uh, uh, spring. Okay. And that, and I was encouraged to go out. These guys, you know, uh, by then I'd moved up to a team in Markham, mm-hmm. um, the Markham Islanders. Okay. And uh, they encouraged me. They had a backup goalie on the team that was, uh, sorry, a, a backup goalie for the national team. Okay. That was on the team, okay. Carl Berry. Okay. Um, who's since passed. But uh, yeah, he encouraged me. He said, come on out. And he gave me the advice, uh, you know, don't go out as a forward because their their forwards are phenomenal. Yeah, they're loaded. You know, they're they're fast. They're strong. They're, you know, he said, work on your defense and play D. Mm-hmm. And that's what I did. I dropped back and played D. Mm-hmm. And uh, strange enough, here, here's a, a cool story about how I made the team. Tom, I went Tom. out and that. And uh, what they do is they take your sizing. Once they have the like the it narrowed down to second last cuts. Okay. They take your sizing because there's, you know, certain uniforms you have to wear for Paralympic as Canada representative and things like that. Yeah. yeah. So what they did is they put the bags, which is like large duffel bags, mm-hmm. um, full of your stuff mm-hmm. in a room. Okay. And they basically told us, if your bag's there, you made the team. Okay. If it's not, sorry. sorry. Yeah. So I walked around, didn't see my bag. Oh, and man. honestly, I didn't have the confidence at that time in myself. Mm-hmm. to think I was actually going to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I realized I was good. You know, mm-hmm. I was scoring a lot of goals, and you know, but that was house league. Yeah. Whenever you jump to a competitive, there's a huge difference. For sure. You know, it's it's the, the big fish, small pond. <laughs> yeah. Small fish, big pond type of thing. Yeah. So I went around, looked at the bags, went over to the coaches and said, well, guys, thanks very much. And, you know, I appreciate the, you know, the chance. And, mm-hmm. and they looked at me like, what are you talking about? One of them walked me over and said, there's your bag there. <laughs> you know, I was like quite elated. I can imagine. And then I guess you guys went on to win bronze that year. Tell me, a little bit, tell me a little bit about your first experience in the Paralympics and like getting to wear that maple leaf on your chest. What was that like? I'll tell you, the first step on the ice at a Paralympic Games, mm-hmm. you've got crowds, you know, like 4,000 plus. Mm-hmm. um it, it's insane a lot of them are kids they love they, they give a lot of tickets to the schools mm-hmm. and that so the kids come out so it's loud you've got this you know, high-pitched loud screaming <laughs> yeah and i was in awe of the moment i stepped on that ice but fortunately i have that thing where once that puck drops it's still time. yeah you know sort of thing but yeah that was you know it's an experience i'll never ever forget i can imagine can't even can't even imagine what that you like representing your country on on the biggest stage there is. So pretty impressive. And, and like I said a couple of minutes ago, not one time, but three times at the Paralympics. So then I guess 98 would have been Lillehammer. And you guys won silver in Lillehammer? Uh, 94 right? was Lillehammer. Uh, sorry, sorry. Nagano. Nagano, that's right. Got my ears mixed up there. Um, yeah, we, we won silver that year. I honestly thought we'd win gold. Uh, mm-hmm. We had such an amazing tight team that year. Mm-hmm. Um, and we only, you know, kept improving, and that. And I'll tell you, that year, it came down to the gold medal game versus Norway. Mm-hmm. Um, now, at that point, three of us, uh, three countries had always medaled. Okay. It'd been Norway, Sweden, and us. Okay. Now it'd been different orders of medals, but always those three. But always those three, and that. So we played Norway in the finals. They mm-hmm. actually scored on their first two shifts against us. No way. And that was the only goals of the game. No way. 
Yeah. So we just went out there nervous. They caught us off guard. Yeah. And that you know, was they it. They deserve the win for that, you know. But Tough. live it's one of those live and learn. For sure. Well, a couple of years later, you end up capturing gold at the world championships. And if I recall correctly, you had a pretty big part in that uh in that game. Can you tell me a bit about that? That was actually quite an awesome experience on its own, too. Yeah. Uh, the world championships were in Salt Lake City. Basically, we tested out the venues that we're going to use for the, in the Olympics and Paralympics two yeah. years later. And uh, so, yeah, we played down there. Uh, we made the final. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I wasn't one of the strongest guys. I wasn't one of the superstars by any means. Mm-hmm. I was one of, you know, what were we, 12 players mm-hmm. um, out there. And so a lot of times as it got later in, in the into the game, I would be a bench warmer okay. sort of thing. And that and I had no problem, you know, with that for the most part. As long yeah. as somebody out there just as good or better is playing, you're okay. You know, I'm cool with that. So I happened to be sitting out and we went to overtime. Okay. And we I guess we went about three ish minutes into overtime. Mm-hmm. And uh all of a sudden I actually had my helmet up sitting there but i was close to the door yeah um going out and uh somebody i guess had come off and the assistant coach tapped me on the head go so down with the helmet out i went yeah the puck puck was in our end somebody i don't even know if it was our guy or their guy had sent it around the boards to the defenseman who was right behind me like i was coming in behind him yeah he didn't even see me coming because i was coming out the like that high door yeah Swooped around, knocked the puck away, and that, and it was one of those moments where you have that split second where you think, "Well, I'm defenseman. I'm not supposed to go for that puck." But at the same time, it's That's a break, it. you know. Exactly. Um, but it, fortunately, a teammate of mine, uh, Sean Matheson, mm-hmm. um, he used metal sticks. Okay. And he had a distinct when he when sledge hockey used two sticks. Yes. To, to propel like a ski motion. Yeah. And, that, and I could hear the ting, ting, so you ting as he went by. And I'll tell you, I followed him, but I followed him at like such a pace where it seemed like it was slow motion. I can imagine. And I saw their goalie come out. He went around him, put it in the end. And I'll tell you, my arms were in the air before he even shot that puck. I knew it was in. <laughs> you knew it. What was just that? to be a part of that. But the most special part, I'll tell you, and Carl Berry, the, the one that brought me out originally, mm-hmm. told me this. He says, there is nothing more special when you're like a diehard Canadian than hearing your national anthem played at something like that. I'm sure. And I'll tell you, it not ashamed. It brought tears to my eyes. I can imagine. Special, special moment. I'm getting chills just thinking about that. That's yeah, I'm watering up too. That's crazy. But my camera's not uh, very good. <laughs> just like just to be on the ice and you had a front row seat to that. That's that's yeah. wild. And then I guess I'm sure you had some crazy partying after that one. Um, like you said, that would have been 2000. Incredible yes. moment. Yeah. And then 02 Salt Lake City Paralympics. Yeah. Was that, was that, I'm, this is just my own interest, but was that uniquely special because it was on North American soil? And I assume that there was probably more Canadians that came out to that? Not just more Canadians, but family members. Of course. There have been some family members that did some of the traveling for some of the other guys, mm-hmm. um, but mine never did. Okay. Um, but in Salt Lake City, I had all but my sister there um, for that, and uh, it was it was awesome knowing that they're in the stands cheering for you, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, get off the ice and you can go see them later, and you know, knowing that you can sit there and talk to them. It's not like coming back and bringing stories back to them now. It's it's fresh. <laughs> exactly. You know, and they, they have to they have to experience. Yeah, they had to experience it too with you. I'm sure like that's got to be a highlight for your family, I feel like, at that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. So then 2002, obviously, your last Paralympic Games. Did you yeah. step away from the game after that? Or, or sort of how did your uh, sled hockey career progress from there? It, it was honestly a mix of things. There was a change of coaching staff. Okay. Um, I was getting older. Um, my first games, I was 27, Okay. which is pretty late for yeah. know, a lot of athletes to start, you know, playing a game. I'd say so. Um, so we're talking, uh, what, eight years later, nine years later. Mm-hmm. Um, so now I'm mid thirties. You're slowing down. 
And you've got guys like, you know, and some people out there will probably know these names, Billy Bridges, yeah, um, Brad Bowden, you know, coming on the ice at 15 years old. And I'm, you know, twice over twice their age and I got to chase them around the ice. You know? <laughs> like, no, you're right. And like those, those are the guys I already have grown up watching in like Torino and then Vancouver and so forth. So it, make, it makes sense at some point, I guess, the clock's uh, no longer on your side, right? Yeah. So at that point, I guess it sounds like you're, your sledge career was winding down. Did did you not then participate in any pair of sports for a while, or were you still staying active? Because of the the back issues and stuff like that, I actually took a, a few years off, like okay. not not even considering. Um, I'll tell you, I was dying to play. I can imagine. Um, I missed it a lot for sure. But at the same time, you have to come to terms with reality, mm-hmm. um, sort of thing. But I started thinking about other sports um, once I learn what was going on with my back and what was happening and, and what I could do, what I couldn't do. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I looked at something, the, the big one I was looking at was curling. Okay. But I really couldn't find an accessible place in Toronto. Mm-hmm. They told me, I, I forget where I had to go, but I had to go like Peel or Durham or something. Yeah. I think Mississauga has a lead. You know, and that, so for me, especially living in Scarborough at the time, it was just too crazy. You know, yeah. I, I couldn't do it. Um, so I'd actually stopped for a number of years. Uh, I did a lot of talks, okay. um, over the years at schools and, and even a couple of businesses, mm-hmm. um, about my experiences and, and, you know, how, how to get where you want to be in life, mm-hmm. um, and, and having goals and having desire and passion and, and things like that. And, uh, which actually brought me to the power wheelchair league. Um, yes. So, so, so that's where I was going to go next. Like, how did you first get introduced to power hockey and, and power wheelchair hockey? And what was that like, your first experience with the game? I'm going to be brutally honest here. Okay. Uh, because, I, because honestly, I, I think it's important. Mm-hmm. Um, even people with disabilities mm-hmm. can have preconceived notions. 100%. You know, and I did, um, shamefully, but I did. Um, it's actually funny. I did a speech at, uh, I'm going to say the name wrong, but I think it was Sunny View okay. um, School. Yeah. Um, and it turned out to be the whole school in the gym <laughs> and that. And uh, a young lad at the time okay. came up and presented me with a gift on behalf of the whole school. Mm-hmm. The young lad happened to be Mike Yacovoni. Huh. Okay. Small okay. World. So, yeah. So, you know, we went on our merry way and separated and stuff. And it was actually years later, we reconnected. Mm-hmm. He found me, I guess, on Facebook and said, hey, you know, you won't remember me, but. And he told me the story. And said, oh, yeah, okay, cool. Mm-hmm. And then we became friends. And that, and he's the one actually introduced me, along with Severio uh, Romano, mm-hmm. into the power hockey. My whole attitude changed when I saw the game played. Mm-hmm. You know, there was guys like um, yourself. Uh, there was uh, Matt Coburn. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, uh, a number of the goalies were amazing too. Mm-hmm. Um, and that, and that when I watched the game, I'm sitting there going, I really love this because everybody has a role mm-hmm. and everybody's comfortable in that role. Exactly. Uh, you know, in sledge hockey or even in general hockey, mm-hmm. the goal scores are glorified. Of course. You know, and yes, they're important in, in power hockey too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I'll tell you, no more than, you know, yourself or anybody else out there. It's true. I was, yeah. was going to say, I think I, you, can, you can build up this, but I think one thing that's unique about power hockey in comparing to other pair of sports, and like you said, even traditional sports, is it's such an inclusive game where it doesn't matter your ability or your lack of ability. There's yes. a role for everybody. And like you were just saying, Everybody has an impact on the game. It doesn't matter your skill level if you can take a slap shot like yourself and go end to end, or if you're like me and your sticks tethered to your chair. Yep. So I went into the whole thing not thinking I'm going to be the team. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of guys do. There's certain people, yeah. they're great, mm-hmm. you know, but they lead the team. Mm-hmm. My view is to make the team better. Mm-hmm. I'm going to sit there and I'm going to, uh, yes, I'm going to do my thing, mm-hmm. but I'm going to look for the open person. I'm going to teach them how to find open spots. Mm-hmm. I'm going to teach them how to score goals. 
mm -hmm. um, or you pass or, you know, things like that. That's what I wanted to do in that sport. I wanted to, to make the team a team. Exactly. Not be the team. Exactly. The first two seasons, I didn't even make playoffs in my teams. Yeah. That upset some people, but, you know, so what? Yeah. It's all about the team. I know there's a number of players out there that are happy because they learned things mm -hmm. and they got better. And that made me happy. Now, the third year, and then I actually said I was going to play three years originally. Okay. And that was it. Really? Sort of, um, well, that was my original thought. I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit more in a second on that one. Um, and that, and my third year, I said, screw it. I'm not missing playoffs again. And there was a lot of talk about, well, he's not that great. Because I'm not scoring 60 goals or 80 goals or People 90 goals, that sort of thing. So we turn around, and I think we needed to win the last five games of the season, mm -hmm. regular season. And, yeah, I made sure we did. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we didn't lose a game in the playoffs. No, you guys went all the way. So, you know, I kind of showed what I could do. For sure. You're, you're uh, like you said, you're playing the leadership role at the start, but you knew when to turn it on and you were going to dominate and you, Some, you have, sometimes leadership means you got to step up it's true absolutely you have to be there in the big moments right that's yeah. that's the most important thing yeah. um just just tying power hockey a little bit back to sledge do you think there's any similarities and unique things that both make their sports similar and unique um and different there's a lot that makes it different and it's, it's fortunate and unfortunate in some cases. Mm -hmm. um, in sled, you need more ability. For sure. Okay. You're sitting on top of two skate blades. Yeah. So you're four inches off the ground and you've got like skate blades and some people have them like an inch or two apart. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you need a lot of balance in that core. Yeah. Core strength is crazy. Okay. And then, like I said earlier, you have two sticks that you have to use like a ski motion. Mm -hmm. so you have to really have some upper body mm -hmm. and that ability now there are um sledges out there for the recreational okay. Um, okay. leagues and stuff like that that actually have pushers okay so you can get away with you know if, if somebody can hold the sticks then they're fine then they can play you know mm -hmm. as long as you got somebody pushing them around of course um and, and that's okay you know for those people i've, I've seen people absolutely love doing that mm -hmm. um you know so there's a lot of uh like, especially when you get up to the higher ranks, mm -hmm. you need that a uh, much more ability. Of course, of course. Um, but I'll tell you, the biggest difference I personally have found, um, A, is equipment. Mm -hmm. Everybody has the same equipment pretty much in sledge hockey. Mm -hmm. You know, um, If somebody invents something, it eventually will get back to other countries. You know, exactly. That sort of thing. So it's, it's pretty fairly equal playing ground. Mm -hmm. I find in power hockey, though, the chair means so much. That's very true. When I started playing, I started playing in a slower chair, mm -hmm. and that and people were blowing by me, you know. So it didn't matter how good you are. If they had if the got, yeah, if you got three people coming at you, like you know, you they're getting to you before you get to the center line. Yeah. So you know that kind of thing makes a difference as opposed to the the person's abilities. For sure. Um, and the other second part, which has been my Achilles heel, is feeling of the puck. Interesting. I would never have thought about that. In sledge, you've got a, a, an actual hockey puck. Yeah. So it's weighted. So you can feel yeah. it on the stick. I feel it on the stick. We use a wiffle ball. Yeah, you don't feel it. In power, I can't. Yeah. I don't. Th there's a few times where I'm going along. I thought I had a thought. I go to shoot, and it's like. Yeah. You know. You, you know what? I don't. I don't even have upper body really, and and even me, I notice it too. You don't feel it on your blade because it's yeah. so light. So I get caught looking down a lot. Yeah. Which has caused some accidents. Of course. <laughs> Sorry, people. Building off that, do you miss the physicality of sledge? Now yes. I know myself, I've never I never played sledge, but just from watching hockey, I love the contact. And we, we do have some in 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 power hockey, but yeah, it's more it's not legal. <laughs> exactly. And it's more accidental, right? Yes. So, so what's your take on that? Do you wish the sport was a little bit more physical? And, and I think the answer is yes, that you do oh, miss. Absolutely. Uh, absolutely. When, you, when you're playing, it's, it's closer to hockey. Of course. You know, 
um, and that and what you, you're used to seeing, especially the Canadian style. Mm-hmm. The Canadian style is a contact style. Yes, yes. You know, and and we had that so much out there, and uh, I just I loved it. You know, I, one of my favorite pictures I have, and I'll show it to you one day, Please. is uh, myself and our captain Todd Nicholson on the on the national team, mm-hmm. and that and we actually closed in on a Swedish guy who tried to cut the defense. Oh no! And so you see Todd and I like this. Yeah. And all you see is a little piece of a yellow sweater <laughs> in between us. And you turned them. So, yeah. So moments like that, yes, I, I miss it so much. Switching gears a little bit here, Rob. So obviously three-time Paralympian, tons of tons of accolades and accomplishments. Um, obviously, you're wearing the national jersey numerous times. But uh, I guess two years ago now, you had the opportunity to represent Canada in power hockey on the international stage, traveling to Australia. Can you tell me what that experience is like and how did it feel to have that Maple Leaf trust back on your trust? Well, let me start with the fact that Australia has always been on my bucket list. Me too. And to get to go there was phenomenal on its own. Mm-hmm. Um, to get to go there to represent Canada would made it so much extra special. Um, anytime I can put a jersey on, on my back, um, that says, you know, the shows the maple leaf. Mm-hmm. It's such pride, you know. You go out there and you you play, you play hard. You know, you want to, to do well for the sport, for the team, for the country. Okay. And uh, that that experience was amazing. Um, it was it was tough because they play such a different game than we do. Very true. Very true. Um, but at the same time, it's one of those learning curves, you know. Um, once we got a, a, the hang of things. And a number of the players had also played in Italy before. I didn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but so they had already had a taste of it. Um, so, yeah, it was it was uh, interesting, but uh, amazing at the same time. I'm sure this, like you said, doesn't go to a country that you wanted to visit and then represent in Canada again. Do you think there's a possibility in the future that power hockey will become a Paralympic sport? And is that something you hope happens? I certainly hope it happens. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a very unique and amazing sport, and, and we have to get that money to get that equipment to use it to learn. To you know, so it's no, a process. It's, it's it, so it really true. is a process. So true. I mean, at least you're on the right track. I think with some tournaments and and competitions and and starting to grow and get more players. So we'll see what happens in the future. Obviously, right? Fingers um, crossed. Exactly. I think that's the dream for everybody. Um, Switching gears a tad a little bit, we kind of touched upon this earlier when we talked about inclusivity and and you said even your own perceptions. Um, But I think one thing that's really unique about sport is it has the power to bring people together and it also has the power to change people's deep-seated perceptions. So how do you think parasports and power hockey can help change people's and society's perspectives of those that have mobility issues or, or disabilities or, or what have you? People in general society, I just find they don't see us out there as much. Mm-hmm. Now, it's it's become better in the past 10, 20 years as things become more accessible. Mm-hmm. But there's still not a lot out there that's accessible. So mm-hmm. the general public doesn't see a lot of people with disabilities. And if they do, they don't see them doing much. For sure other than going down the street or something, or, you know, or looking at a step that they can't, you know, yeah. go over to get into a store, yeah, things like yeah. that. So their connotation is, is, you know, poor them, or they can't do that or things like that, instead of thinking about what they can do. Mm-hmm. And that's why sport is so important because yes, it's adapted for us, mm-hmm. but yes, we are the ones that are doing it. We are the ones that have the knowledge. We're the ones that have the physical ability, mm-hmm. you know? So to show people our abilities, our mind, bodies, and soul mm-hmm. is so important because that's the way people should be looking at us first, mm-hmm. you know? What a bright, intelligent young man I'm talking to right now. Thank you. Not a guy that's sitting in a wheelchair, poor him. Of course. You know? And- that's the way it should be. And that's what I see sport doing for people. And I'll tell you, when I go out and did those speeches and that with, you know, schools and things like that, the awe that they were in, like, you know, you could tell they were shocked. Like, wow, you did that? You know? So, yeah. And, and that knowledge, but knowledge brings power. Very true. I think 
I think we'll end that question there on that note. You're, you're absolutely right. Um, my final question for you, a bit of a lighter note, but I know you like food and I know you like to cook and bake. Um, so what's your favorite go-to eats these days? What are you enjoying? It's actually funny. I just made this the other day. My number one thing, my mom left the cookbook. Uh, she passed, you know, a year and a half ago. Um, but she left the cookbook and uh, I've been going through making a number of the different things in there uh, in a tribute to her. And this Amazing. past week, I actually made one of my all-time favorite things. I'm a meat and potatoes guy. Ooh, I make mean, shepherd's too. pie. Delicious. Yeah. Delicious. Yeah. I'd, uh, I might have to get you to send me some of that sometime. <laughs> like you, I'll, I I'll make it. a special dish for you once COVID's over and I can actually go and Absolutely. socialize again. You can come by. We'll have some beers. Beers and hang good. Uh, before I let you go here, Rob, um, here at Inside the Trees, we like to do this little rapid fire segment called the Six Shot Shootout. Now it's time for the Six Shot Shootout. It's six rapid fire questions coming at you, so get ready. So I'm going to hit you with six questions, and it's like this or that, or red or blue, or, or vanilla or chocolate. So you, you know, say it, and you choose one or the other. Okay. You ready? Sure. Rock or rap music? Oh, rock, 100%. Me too. Pizza or burger? And what's your favorite topping? Ooh. I've steered away from pizza now, so I'd have to say burger. Okay. Um, and for me, it's cheese and bacon. Doesn't have to be anything else, but there can be. There can be ketchup and onion and relish. But cheese and bacon, I'm happy. Me too. I like the way you think. A beach or a city vacation? And do you have any bucket list destinations? Oh, wow. Uh, I know it's supposed to be rapid fire, but this one's a tough one. I steer away from beach just because a lot of it's not accessible. Very true. Very Although true. I'm, I, I'm more of a, a, a get and meet the people, not be in the city so much. Yeah. So. That's it. But I'd have to go with city. Would you rather be rich or famous? Honestly, I don't yeah. need either. I agree. I don't need I either either. I need to be comfortable. Yeah. So true. I like the way you think. You're comfortable, you're happy, and you yep. don't have to deal with all the headaches that come with being rich and famous. Yeah. Um, I know you've been taking some pictures and doing a lot of photography recently. So would you rather a digital camera or a film camera? I loved my film camera back in the day. Okay. But digital allows me to go out and take a thousand photos to get five good ones. So true. You don't have to worry about the film. Film, I'd have to pay a thousand dollars to yeah. get five good ones. So some I'd have to go digital. Some of my buddies uh, have the film cameras. And just to develop the pictures, it's ridiculous. Absolutely yes. ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, and my final question, power hockey or slide hockey? That's a trick you want, I know. At this moment in time, mm -hmm. I'd have to say power hockey. Mm -hmm. um, if I still had all my abilities sledge. and didn't have the back like I do, I'm sorry, but I'd be back in sledge so fast your head would spin. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, no worries. I got to be honest. Uh, and my, my two final parting questions. Um, what would you say to any para-athlete that finds themselves in a similar situation uh, where obviously their disability or, or lack of ability sort of limits them. Um, what would you say to them in terms of getting them to participate in power hockey? How would you encourage them to get involved? You know, no matter what I've, I've learned, no matter what your disability is, as long as you have the mindset and you want to do something, there's a way to do it. Mm -hmm. Power hockey brought me a way to do hockey again, the sport I love the most. Mm -hmm. And that. So if, if you want something bad enough, you can do it. I love it. Well, Rob, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of Inside the Creeps. I appreciate hearing your stories and your expertise about the game, man. It's been a blast. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun, Matt. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us on Inside the Crease, the podcast dedicated to the power hockey community. If you enjoyed today's show, please like, subscribe, and tell a friend. Visit our website at insidethecrease.com and follow us on social media at Inside Crease. 